So the Biden State Department is under fire for spending millions on pet projects, including diversity, equity and inclusion initiatives and environmental funding overseas. The GOP says it underscores how misplaced this administration's priorities are. Joining us now is Senator Eric Schmidt from the Senate Commerce Department. Uh, good to see you. I haven't seen you since you were AG, but uh, that's another story. You sent a letter to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken last week demanding his answers about the spending, like on $30 million of spending on DEI issues, diversity equity issues overseas while we have a, a backlog of, of getting out passports for U.S. citizens. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, and that's the important context, David, is, is how we got here. We've gotten, you know, over 500 um, inquiries into our office alone, my Senate office alone, about delayed passports. It's reached a point now where American citizens are waiting months for a passport. And so when you have that kind of failure to do the basic functions of government, I mean, the federal government does all kinds of stuff it shouldn't do. One of the things it's supposed to do is deliver that kind of constituent service for people who are traveling, American citizens who are traveling. They're not doing that. So come to find out what are some of the other things they're doing. Well, spending $30 million for DEI initiatives in other countries. I mean, this stuff is nuts. They're is. paying, you know, $1.5 billion for promoting sports in other, uh, in other countries. It's very bizarre. But the punchline here is that the American people deserve better. They deserve to have their passport applications processed in a reasonable time. I want to talk about another pet peeve that you have, which is the administration taking over the constitutional powers away from equal, equal branches, like the Congress, with, of course, the student loan forgiveness program, uh, or like the, the Supreme Court, which voted against the administration in favor of, of giving power back to Congress, which is supposed to allocate resources that large, $400 billion large. Uh, does that concern you? And what can we do about it? I mean, what if, what if the administration just tries to defy the Supreme Court and spend money through executive powers anyway? Well, this administration has a track record of just, you know, sort of thumbing its nose at the rule of law. And you look at what this, the only thing that's happening now with the Supreme Court is they don't like the decisions. They don't like that this is a court that will apply the law and not how they want the law to be. And so they're talking about, you know, undermining the Supreme Court now, packing the Supreme Court. And let's be clear, David, they're only a vote or two away in the Senate if they had the House of ending the filibuster, packing the court, adding states to the union. That's how radical the Democrats are at this point. So, you know, part of my mission here in the Senate is to take on this broader administrative state. We've got to have the Article I branch Congress be the policymaking body. It's not Joe Biden's, uh, you know, prerogative to wipe away a half a trillion dollars worth of debt with a stroke of right, a pen. Right. You also had the runaway vaccine mandate uh, from OSHA, which was an agency created to make sure forklifts would beep when they back up. So, oh, time and time again, now you see a supercharged administrative state that's being, uh, you know, uh, run by the Biden administration, and it's 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 a violation of the separation of powers. And and he does not have the authority to usurp the power of the, the judiciary. I mean, that's how dictatorships start. The first thing, whether it's Nicaragua, Cuba, Venezuela, first thing they do is to try to politicize, pull powers away from an independent judiciary. And too often they succeed. We don't want it to happen here. Senator, thank you for joining us. Good to see you again. Appreciate it. Good to see you again, David.